Well, Tony, cause I- hey, Tony, how you doing, buddy? Tony! Yo, what's up, guys? How you doing? Dude, I'm so happy this is really you, and I see Jimmy right next to me, so I know it's really you. <laughs> Tony, I talked, I seen you in person since that uh, prank phone call Jimmy did on me, uh, you did with me, and uh, it was horrible, Tony, because I like you so much as a fighter, <laughs> And I like your I like your style, man. I always watch your training That's videos, cool. and I and I got myself after that phone call. I kept until I seen you. I was like, I don't I don't know if I like him. I, I, something was in my head. I felt like it was yeah. really you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, coach, it's not me. It wasn't me. It was a good acting, though. I mean, I, I, I was kind of upset at first, but I mean, I could realize that. Like, but I was like, man, do I really sound like an asshole? No, Fuck. no, oh, you I, don't. I wasn't even Jimmy. Doing, I wasn't even, yourself. I wasn't even doing your voice. I couldn't <laughs> work. I was just, I figured Matt would know it's me. It was like a little little kid is trying to fool his parents around yeah. the corner. I'm like, there's no way he's going to think this is Tony. <laughs> I thought it was cool. I got to see Coach Sarah afterwards, which is dope anyway. So, I mean, it was dope. I mean, I, I really look up to you, Matt. I mean, oh, man, you I see you're one of the guys that. that actually fought GSP and put him away. So it was cool oh. as fuck to like meet you and like that. Hey, so, man. Respect. Hey, much respect, dude. I, uh, I've been saying for a while, uh, you know, that I really enjoy your style. What I really enjoy is that you really enjoy it. You look the most at home when you're fighting. And when you do that El Kakui dance, let me tell you something. <laughs> I'm, dude, I'm, you're feeling it. And I'm, everybody watching it knows that you love being in there. How, when did you realize that you were a fighter, Tony? Early on? Um, I've always been a competitor. Um, you know, fighter, I've always been a fighter too. But as far as a competitor goes, I just I love the art of competition. Just to be able to prepare for an event, to be able to, to go through all the bullshit. And then, you know, obviously like weigh-ins and wrestling, you, you make weight, you get to wrestle. And to be able to do that inside like an octagon and have like cameras on you and have the whole world watching, it's it's a different kind of feeling, man. And to be comfortable in there, to be able to dance, you really have to fucking prepare really well. And if I didn't prepare well, I wouldn't obviously be dancing inside that cage. But yeah. when you guys do see that, that's in the zone. Yes. That's the flow zone, man. And it's one of the best feelings in the world. And I can't explain it, man. It's just You're just in the zone. And, dude, how long ago did you actually have your surgery? Because I think you're, you're, you're back a lot faster than people thought you'd be. I think it was like five months. Five months, I think it was. And they told me what, eight months to a year, like six months to a year. And I just kind of just, I knew my body. I knew, like, I've been through a couple of surgeries before. And I just... I was really determined, man, just to just kind of just tell people that I can do it. Um, and one of the PTs I met, he kind of like shook my hand in a way I didn't really like him, and I just took it. I took to my talked to my wife and I talked to my doctors, and I just really went after it. I, I went after my nutrition. I haven't drank since February. Um, you know, I quit drinking, you know, just because I like the way my body's feeling and how it's reacting to different things. And I really took on this health and wellness and recovery, like it was just like my business. And I had a lot of good mentors that they gave me the tools I needed. And as soon as surgery was done, I had one of these guys came over and hooked me up with this red light laser, the Thor laser. And they have the same thing at the Performance Institute. And it helped with my recovery, helped with like breaking down like the scar tissue. And man, I fucking, I just really went after it like it was a fight camp. I, I had to think about it like that. And here we go, man. I'm, I'm here fucking fighting this weekend. And you didn't like your your, uh, your physical therapist when you first met him? Did, did you turn around and start to like him, or, or, did, or did it motivate you just to get better faster? I think it motivated me to get better faster. I mean, it was some people just rub you the wrong way, or just some just people just don't click. It's not like he wasn't good or not bad. It was just, for me, it was a challenge. Like, I love challenges. I'm a competitor. So when somebody tells me, you know, this is how long it's going to take, and then I went to his place and I looked at everything and I was like, dude, you have the same shit that I have in my academy. Like, I have turf, I have my mats, I have my stuff, I have my recovery units, I have my Normatex, I have my Hyperize, I have my PBM modulators. I was like, I have my hot and cold contrast and my aqua therapy. Like, I, I, there, was, there was different things that I, I saw there and I've been through a lot of PT places and I just, I was like, fuck it. I was like, this dude doesn't even know me. He had like M NLF or the National Football League people, he had Major League Baseball players, Major League Soccer players, but the one people that he didn't have was UFC. And so I kind of like took it upon myself, I was like, look, man, this guy's going to have me doing a lot of these traditional type of workouts, right. um, traditional type of ways to heal my body, and here I am, I have a fucking cadaver graft in my leg, and I don't know, you know, if the guy was athletic or not, you know what I mean? So I kind of just took it upon myself to... Really just took the reins, man, and just fucking went after it. And I'm, I'm glad I did. It was such an eye-opening experience. Um, I, I set little small goals for myself, Matt and Nora, Jim. I, I, I went out, I started like a guard for my kids just so I could start lifting things. 
um, and just kind of just start moving around. I, I remodeled my kitchen. You know, I started reading a lot more. I started studying and just just started taking care of my health and making smoothies and just little small goals, man. I just kept setting for myself, and I started crushing them every fucking day. So I had to renew those goals for myself every night. And the, the first part of surgery sucked. I'll, I'll be real with you. It was the fucking like, the worst. As soon as I got out of surgery, I took a couple 20-pound weights, and I started lifting them as much as I fucking could just to put it in my head that, yeah, that you ain't going to fucking sit here. You're not going to fucking feel sorry for yourself. You're going to fucking do something about it. So yeah. I went to work, man. I noticed that. That's the one thing. I, I, you were very positive throughout this, and, and I should say focused, like you were talking about, during this whole process, it would have been very easy. I, I don't feel I'm a bitch, but I think I might have been bitching a little bit about tripping, about losing this, yeah. the belt over this. I might have been sour grapes. And if you were, you weren't bitching about it, man. You just got to work. So that's that that shows your mindset, man. Very impressive. Let's feel for the fire. What am I going to do, sit there and bitch exactly. more about it? I mean, I, I did. You know, I gave myself one day. Yeah. That's, that's what I was taught. I was taught, give yourself one day. You know, after a tournament, if you lost... You gave yourself one day to sulk about it, do whatever the fuck you want, mope about it, cry about it, whatever the fuck you want. But instead, like, I think that the pressure and the the pain that I felt when I was in bed, yeah. like, literally, I, it was it was unbearable. It was fucked up, and I couldn't sleep. So I fucking got up, and I would start doing these little projects, man, just to keep my mind fucking busy and just to keep my body active and the blood flowing and... I mean, my wife was there changing my ice, like in this, like in this compact thing, and she she would help me make my dinner. Like as soon as I kept getting better, I would show up to the facility and I would tell these my my crew, "Be like, hey, I'm gonna be here. So if you guys can be here, I would I would love it." And they would show up, and I and I saw that they would show up for me. So I kept upgrading my facility. I kept getting new things. I kept, you know, I added turf. I added some like small things to my my facility. I, I built a lot of relationships. I mean, I wrote emails to these sponsors, man, myself, to like tell them, be like, hey, I want to work with you guys. You know, I'm, I'm very capable. I'm very able. I'm very genuine in my art, which I love. And, and recovery and health and wellness is my, my, my bag. And I, I really believe that if our brands align, we can work in the near future. Hey, have you ever used up? Uh, sorry, Tony. Have you ever used like PRP shots or any of that stuff with, with the with, with a uh, with the, the was it platelet rich blood or something? Have you ever used that to heal? The PRPs? Yeah. I've had it in my elbow. Does it help? Fuck, it hurts like hell. It does. No, I, I know. I'm just curious if it actually helps with injuries. No, I don't know. I mean, shit, if you're going to be... I just remember there was like a big old bubble in that shit, and it just, shit, it just hurt. <laughs> it just hurt like crazy. You know what I think's brilliant? I love... When, when did you start training with um, Master Eddie Bravo? Was that early on in your career, or did you get to him late, or... With Coach Eddie? Yes. I was actually handed over like a joint. It was funny. One of my coaches, <laughs> <told me. laughs> one of my coaches there's only a certain amount of like uh, technique that somebody can get you and kind of push you far. Yes. And that was, that's been like the whole entire trip when uh, in my jiu-jitsu journey, I actually started over at uh, Templar Costa Mesa oh. and with a guy named Casey. And he gave me the time of day, man. I asked him, I was like, teach me how to pass guard. And he took, he took, he took the liking to me, man. And I actually worked with him really well. And the team was amazing. And they saw that like my my level of thinking and my level of creativity was a lot higher than what it really was, and so they they talked me into like HQ over in Ten Planet, and literally Coach Eddie opened welcomed me with open arms, man. It was probably one of the coolest things mm-hmm. I probably ever did to surround myself around people doing what this sport is really about. I mean, I, I've tried gi before, and yeah. I, it was just it was kind of weird for me. I mean, just people just grabbing on my pants and just doing this yeah. kind of thing and learning how to break grips. But so the, yeah. the, the system which Eddie had already installed was kind of like how I was a freestyle wrestler, so it really matched up really well. And I, I take it serious. When every single time I learn, I, I don't know, I go like 150% into learning it and to making it my own. And fuck, dude, that was what? Four or five years ago? Yeah, not to mention, man, yeah, your body type is, is, is amazing for that, for Eddie's style, that clinching style, Nogi style, where with the high guard, with the rubber guard and all that stuff, your body just seems like made for that style. So I think that's great. When I've seen you aligned with him, I'm like, oh, this is interesting, man. That's great. Yeah, it's, it really actually works out. I mean, the way that he has a system and how he uses his verbiage to be able to help you remember the, the names. I mean, reverse case of Katami. I mean, that's a, yeah. that's a good one, you know, as far as, like, I still want to get my black belt in the gi. Yeah. That's, that's something I want to do. 
um, I just want to keep stacking these accolades and these chips, like how, I, how I've been saying, just these talents, just keep keep adding them up. And his his art, obviously, you know, comes from like John Jacques Machado, yeah. and one of my other coaches I had it from Frangia Miller, and you know, even one of my other ones, Rodrigo Comprido. They would always tell me, "You're going too fast, Tony. Yeah, you're going to miss these opportunities." And I never really got it because I was always that 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 fighter or that wrestler that would always yeah. just try to do things fast. Yeah. Like, how, how fast can I pin this guy? All right, cool. Give me like five to ten seconds. That's that's what I want to do. But they would tell me to slow down. You're missing all these opportunities. And and there here you have my Dars from fucking you know Frangia. And then you have like a lot of my my different types of moves. Like even when Kevin Lee had me against the cage and going into Butterfly Mountain and then pushing him off. These are different things that we prepared for when. We were game planning over in Big Bear, you know, and Coach Eddie actually made the trip up there. He brought a crew that was awesome. We, we worked out really well. And it just really clicked, man. Just you have to know, not just one art in this industry. Hundred percent. Yeah, that I broke my fucking arm in that stuff against Michael Johnson. I had to learn really quick from Muay Thai. Now, so, yeah. Tony, another thing that that sticks out when I see a lot of your your training videos, and I love it, but because uh, I'm an old school, I, I moved from that to once I started learning jujitsu. But my father was an old school Wing Chun man, so I had a wooden dummy in my garage growing up. <laughs> so I would uh, practice with that all the time. I see you using the wooden dummy in some of your training, and I fucking love it. How did you get exposed to the wooden dummy? Just one day, I just I wanted to just open up a just some of my game and I was like I fucking ended up just getting one um, the rope around it the uh, around the dummy was kind of just loose and I just looked at it and it was a it was one of the these pieces that somebody like kind of I just kind of bought it from them and it was used and I could tell that it was used well and in the spots where I I was hitting it I could feel like in my forearm starting to become a little bit more calloused yeah and I could see that my hands were really fast and I've hit the speed bag for a long fucking time I'll be real with you I've hit it for a long time yeah and so all the tools in my gym, I kind of got bored. I kind of just kind of like was like, okay, there needs to be something else out there that can help me elevate my skill set and my hand-eye coordination and just having fun. <laughs> yeah. Shit, watching Jackie Chan rumble in the Bronx. <laughs> that dude, you know what I mean? And watching yeah. Bruce Lee. It, it was just enough time just for me to be able to be like, you know what? I want to try that shit. That and is awesome. I actually learned from one of my, my seafoods uh, from Kung Fu Five Animals out in San Diego. And he taught me a couple forms. And it really worked. And I've gotten some heat, too. People are like, why don't you hit it right? And I'm like, dude, just chill the fuck out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just relax. It's like, I do hit it right. I know what I'm conditioning. I know this is mixed martial arts for me. And I don't have one of those Adam dummies in wrestling yet. So yeah. this right here actually worked out really well. And Tony, when you first got, uh, you know, when you first had the injury uh, before this uh, Khabib fight, did you know immediately kind of like, oh, this is really bad? Or, or did you have a little bit of hope until the next day? Or could you tell immediately? I started working out, and when as soon as I stopped, my legs kind of started to atrophy, and it kind of was funky. I even did a dance, and I kind of was like, all right, afterwards, and I told the guys, I was like, I'm going to fucking try to put the Norma Tech on. I was like, it kind of feels funky. Like, if you're feeling sick, you know what I mean? You don't feel, you don't immediately feel sick. You kind of feel something coming on. Right. My body started settling, and it just didn't feel right, man. Yeah. I tried to fucking get up and move, and it just, it didn't feel fucking right, dude. It, it's, it was probably one of the shittiest things I fucking went through. And who do you? Uh, how do you see the main event going? I mean, no, I mean, obviously, one of two ways. Uh, you know, it, it, it depends on how long it goes, I think. But uh, what are your feelings on it? Uh, to be real, honestly, I think um, Khabib's over. I mean, he's going to be overpowering for Connor. Uh, Connor's got obviously a lot of striking, and his boxing's been um, upped in his footwork and his hand-eye coordination. Obviously, I mean, I respect both these fighters, but. Uh, you know, I always say I want to see a double knockout in the UFC, so hopefully they knock each other the fuck out. <laughs> and are you surprised at how good Pettis has looked lately and how fast he has come right back into the mix? Uh, no, not really, but he's been jumping weight classes. He's been jumping weight classes, and his body has to change in order to drop down to 145. You become a little bit more brittle, or you become a little bit more frail, taking those kind of a cuts, and your body doesn't really adjust to it right away. I mean, he did take a game fight against Michael Chiesa, but I beat the shit out of Kevin Lee, you know, whether who beat Michael Chiesa. And this is an MMA math, and obviously Anthony Pettis is a different competitor. Sure. But he's nothing I haven't seen before in an Edson Barbosa, who was probably at the top of his game. And like I said, this whole entire fight camp, I've cleaned it up. My diet, my mental, my physical, my emotional. I'm really centered. I'm really focused. So I think this guy might be overlooking me. 
Um, even if he has all the fucking film and all the stuff around me for this fight camp, we prepared really diligently as far as ten pound jujitsu, making sure that this dude isn't going to fucking have anything. I prepared really diligently on my Muay Thai with my coach, Coach Billy Fonua, and he's just one of those dudes that just he's hardcore, man. He worked with uh, Brandon Vera, uh, Shogun Hua, and he's worked with Hua uh, Junior dos Santos, and he understands that I don't fuck around with my Muay Thai. I don't fuck around at all. Like if you want to throw some elbows, you want to throw some knees and kicks. That's my dude. That's my coach. That's my that, that's that's crew right there. And I have a crew in Muay Thai. And I, I take like I said, I take my shit seriously. I go and I kick these rubber mats and I do all this. And he kind of he doesn't laugh at it. He knows it's good for me because that's what kind of fighter I am. Like if you fucking wrap my hands in like a Muay Baran fucking type of rope Muay Thai, trust me, I'll feel if I can ride in there. Like that's I feel real comfortable. And have you? Could we ask Dana? We had him on the other day. If you know, again, the, you never know what's going to happen. So many times things go wrong where again the fight's supposed to happen doesn't happen so are you prepared for the possibility that they may come to you the day before and go look there was an issue at the main event do you want to match up with one of these guys absolutely uh, absolutely i prepared really <clears throat> different for this fight like i said I, I prepared for i mean put it this way i've been training around the clock i've been training around the clock just how like a uh, you know in, in certain cases where people are just like as soon as you get towards fight you're going to sleep less and you're going to fucking start fighting more and that's how i've taken this approach in wrestling you don't just take it easy all the way up into the fight no you fucking go down and go hard all the way up into weigh-ins and then even if your homies are fucking cutting weight and they didn't make weight you're cutting weight with them if you're a leader on the team and that's how i've taken this approach i've taken this approach saying if any of these guys need to fall if they're going to fall out if they're going to fucking pull some shit it don't matter I don't give a fuck I'm gonna go in there I'm gonna worry about my game I prepared for Khabib what four times I prepared for Conor what once when he didn't take the fight and I prepared for fucking this guy and Anthony Pettis but I'm not worried about what I can't control I'm only worried about right now my conversation with Jim Norton and Matt Sarah. <laughs> well <clears throat> I'm not alone in this saying that I'm happy you're back Tony I'm Thank happy you you're back man me too, man. It's, it's <laughs> awesome. You know, yesterday at the media day, it was kind of a fun thing. It's just, and then today, and then just tomorrow, it's the whole aura of the fight week, yeah. man, and the fans, and just coming up, asking for autographs, and just taking pictures, and just, it's not the reason why I do it, but it's cool to see the fans' faces, man. Like, seriously, these guys are spending the hard, hard-earned money, like, to buy our pay-per-views, you know, and they're not, they're not doing it, like, out of malice. They're doing it because they want to, and because they love it, and they love the art of the competition. I mean... I, I try to explain to everybody, if you haven't been to a UFC event, y'all need to get your fucking asses there. <laughs> like, and seriously, it's like a monster truck, really. It's like, it's, that's the kind of vibe that you get. You're just like, what the fuck? And when the lights go out, and then when they come on, and you have the music and the walkout, and then you're in there, and then you have the fight itself, and then, yes. you know. Yes. Other, and Bruce Buffer gets you ready. Bruce Buffer fucking <laughs> was a huge part of it. Seriously, man. I mean, it, the whole entire aura is just awesome. I, I can't. I, I talk a lot, but I'm not trying to talk too much about it. But it's just one of those, it's one good, of those fucking man. things. Even just, just even just sporting the Reebok out there. You know, I, I'm not trying to shout out Reebok, but even getting your bag of like your equipment during fight week and signing the posters, like that's the kind of stuff that makes it all good, man. He loves like, it. Kind of just like, yeah, he loves it. it. You all. love everything around yes. it. You love everything surrounding it. You love the fight. You love even the training, getting up to it. You love all of it. Yeah, I really do. I don't like the weight cut. The weight cut's not too much. I mean, sure. but it it doesn't really hurt me. Like I said, I've been cutting weight for almost thirty years, so I mean, it's just one of those things you have to do and just be diligent with. And I've just, like I said, I've been cutting weight since about five months ago, since my fucking my my real surgery. So my diet's been really good. I mean, my skin. Everybody's looking at me like, man, you look fucking younger. Well, shit, man. I took away all the bad habits and I put good ones in. Right. 